Welcome to the Patterson Kelly Educational Video Series. Uh, I'm Dave Connors and I'm going to present today on turndown and what it means to the industry. First we're going to look at uh, a little bit of, of uh, what's behind the turndown and the first thing we need to understand is what is combustion. That's the first thing we need. So we're going to take fuel, we're going to add air, we're going to create a spark and what that should give us is fire or heat. Uh, that's a very simplified version. So basically, uh, natural gas, a little bit of O2, we're going to create some CO2 and some water vapor. In the combustion process, uh, methane gas, which is our natural gas, has a limit of explosivity. So a lower limit and an upper limit. This is necessary to understand because below or above that limit, we're not going to have combustion. So we have to understand what that means. Today's uh, boilers work a little bit differently than what you might be used to years ago. Uh, we're going to use an induced blower. We're going to have a double solenoid uh, gas valve. It's a zero governor negative pressure gas valve. Uh, we're going to use a, a ported uh, stainless steel burner that has a wrapped stainless steel mesh around the outside. This is going to give us uh, increased uh, combustible uh, mixing and also flame retention on the burner itself. We still have an observation port in the boiler and this is so that you can visually see that the flame has occurred. Uh, we don't really want to go by what the flame looks like as far as what the combustion is, whether it's good or bad, we want to actually put uh, equipment on there and confirm that we have the combustion set properly. And this is going to be big in, in, in the next few slides because what is good combustion and what does that involve as far as air? So the first thing we're going to look at is the amount of excess air. So in the lab, we could create uh, what they call stoichiometric combustion. This is uh, no excess air. This is just enough air to burn the fuel that we're burning. And it will not ever happen out in the field. So you have to be very clear about that. This is purely a lab uh, experiment. It will not happen out in the field. There's too many variables like uh, air being impeded, gas pressure drop, uh, venting, uh, a host of things that could actually affect that. So why do we want to control the excess air? Well, natural gas uh, requires 10.1 uh, cubic feet of air for every cubic feet of gas that, you've, that you burn. Uh, because, as I said, that would be stoichiometric combustion that can't happen out in the field. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a little bit of excess air. We need to make sure that, that air gets around every molecule of gas because once we light the gas, the air has is, is got to be used in the combustion process and we have to have a sufficient amount around the gas. So, what does excess air really mean? Out in the uh, marketplace, you're going to hear a lot of people uh, promoting turndown. 5 to 1, 10 to 1, 15 to 1, 20 to 1, sometimes even 25 to 1. Sounds really great. We all like these little uh, buzzwords and, and uh, a lot of times we really don't look at the background, the science behind it to see how it affects the combustion process and the efficiency of the appliance that we're firing. So on a 5 to 1 turn down, we're going to use approximately 20% excess air which is going to enable us to have the highest dew point possible, somewhere between 130, 135, depending upon the relative humidity of the combustion air coming in. When you go up to 10 to 1 turn down, now you're adding about 40% excess air. This is going to drop the dew point because we are drying out the combustion process by adding extra air in there. So that's going to absorb that water vapor that we normally would produce, hopefully, with inside the boiler. So then now the dew point is going to drop down to in a range of about 123 degrees. When we go to 21 turn down, uh, we're going to have to add even more excess air. So we're going to put in 80% excess air. And the dew point again is going to drop even further. And it's going to go down to about 117 degrees 
before we actually condense. So what does that mean in the whole process? Well, when you're running a system, um, one of the factors that, that uh, contributes to uh, the, the condensing process is whatever the return water temperature is. Because that return water temperature is going to wash over the bottom of the heat exchanger. It's going to be the first contact with the gas, the gas from combustion going out of the boiler. So we really want that to be as cold as possible. But in reality, how cold can we really make it? So in the case of a 20 to 1 turndown, if we have a return water temperature of 120 degrees, that's above that 117 degree dew point, so we're not going to condense. We'll condense in the stack, and that looks really nice because you're going to see water coming out of the stack and going into the neutralizer, but it does nothing for the efficiency of the boiler unless we can actually capture that heat from the transfer from vapor to liquid, we don't increase the efficiency of the boiler. So it's really important to worry about the efficiency of the boiler and not the condensing in the stack. So if we go to a picture of the condensing boiler and how this process all happens, as you can see the flame is in the top of the boiler, the combustible gases are going to go down through the heat exchanger and the water is going to go up through the heat exchanger. What we would like that combustion gas to do is to be cooled by that heat exchanger water and as it gets down to the bottom before it exits the boiler we've dropped it below the dew point so this is why we want to really keep that dew point as high as possible. Okay so let's look at a couple examples of uh, the flu loss calculator. We've done some uh, instances where we're going to do a, a 5 to 1 where we're putting in uh, roughly 22 percent excess air. This was an actual um, uh, test we ran and then on the, on the right side we, we added 80 percent excess air because we were going to do a 20 to 1 turndown as opposed to a 5 to 1 turndown. As you can see from the results uh, the flue temperature on the left side is 120 degrees because we're only doing a 5 to 1 turndown we're, we're well below the uh, dew point, so we are going to condense and we are going to go over 90% efficiency, not a problem. However, that same boiler, if we should go to 20 to 1 turndown using the excess air method, we now uh, are going to have a flue temperature that's 120 degrees, same flue temperature, but we know that the dew point has dropped to 117, so again, we're not going to condense. Uh, so this is really the crux of the problem, is where do we actually condense and what can we do about that. So let's look at, uh, for a minute, let's just look at uh, the way we can do turndown, uh, the different methods. So turndown uh, can be accomplished by uh, actually controlling the pressure drop through the gas valve. So we have some very sophisticated electronic gas valves today where we can actually uh, modulate the temp or the uh, pressure through the gas valve and and thereby controlling the flow of gas and we can just turn that gas down 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 until we get down to the level we need at the same time we can also reduce the uh, uh, fan speed and reduce the amount of air going through there so that we can make the mixture fall within that roughly four to fifteen percent window of combustion uh, again, uh, this is a, a relatively expensive way to do it. Uh, another method, of course, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is to just use excess air. So in this particular example here, that's what we did. We used the excess air, but the downside to that is, of course, we reduce uh, the dew point and usually down below what, we, what our system can, can provide to, to uh, enable us to condense. So the third method would be how do we fool a negative pressure zero governor gas valve that we have enough airflow and yet we reduce the airflow. So uh, the best uh, example I can give you is that if we have a hose that's putting out five gallons a minute and it's only projecting out of the hose uh, three feet because there's very little pressure behind it and then we put our thumb over the hose, uh, we can reduce the opening. Uh, the same volume, so that's going to increase the pressure, and of course the stream of water will go out a lot further than, than it did in the beginning. 
So what you need to do with, with this type of a gas valve is you have to create a, a pressure drop in the Venturi because we're going to have a sensing line from the gas valve that's going to sense that pressure drop and that's going to regulate the uh, regulator in the gas valve to allow more or less gas. So what we've done is we've, we've been able to uh, restrict the airflow through there so that we get enough of a pressure drop to engage the regulator in the gas valve and keep the gas valve open and operable. But the problem is, is the fan is running at ignition fan speed. So with the fan running at ignition fan speed, it's going to be too much air for that reduction in gas. So we have a second uh, regulator that is going to do basically the same thing and, and restrict the airflow so that we keep the, the quantity of air uh, in sync with the quantity of gas and we get the proper mixture. By doing this, we are allowed to do a significant turn down without any excess air maintain that dew point that's up around 130 degrees and of course we'll get the efficiency that we're looking for. So that makes you ask why would we even bother to, to do all of this? Well there's a couple of other factors that I haven't discussed yet and these also impact efficiency. When we do an excessive turn down where we're uh, slowing that gas down through the boiler and that gas will actually go into a laminar flow. If you don't know what a laminar flow is, this is basically a flow with no turbulence. So if you can picture the gas uh, volume going through the, the uh, exchanger, it just goes straight through. There's no blending or anything and the outside of the gas stream is giving off that hot gas temperature to the, the surface of the heat exchanger. Unfortunately, the center of the gas flow is actually going to be the hottest part as it goes down through the heat exchanger because there's no way for us to blend that and get that hotter gas to the outside of the envelope of, of gas flowing through. So here's the, here's the problem with that. Now we get a reduced heat transfer because now we don't have the uh, higher temperature uh, next to the cooler temperature and of course the differential in temperature is what determines the rate of transfer from hot to cold. The other problem is as we do that turn down obviously we must have a low load on the system we don't need as much water flow either so what we ended up doing is we end up turning the pump down now the water flow is also going to go laminar and that's the exact opposite so now the heat from the flame is heating the outside of that water skin. That outside heats up dramatically and of course as that heats up it slows down the transfer of heat into the water. Because we're not flowing at any great speed we don't get the, term, the turbulence and so the, the coolest part of the water is on the inside of the stream and we really would like that push to the outside. So again we really want to keep the flow rate up as much as possible. And, and also um, be able to blend that to get that good mix. And this is why at Patterson Kelly we've decided that 10 to 1 turn down is sufficient. We'll do it without excess air so we'll maintain our dew point and we also will get good blending because we're still at a, a high enough flow rate that we're going to get that mixing that was designed into the heat exchanger in the first place. So what are some benefits of that? Uh, well, obviously, the lower firing rate does give you efficiency, a better efficiency. But you have to remember that efficiency is mostly driven by the temperature of the return water. So when you're doing a system design, if you really want to get maximum efficiency, you design the system to run at the coldest possible temperature, regardless of the firing rate of the boiler. We can add another percent on, go into low fire, that's fine. But temperature is critical. One of the other uh, benefits, uh, of course, is, is that uh, once we have dropped below that, that dew point, we're going to pick up that, that latent heat from the uh, conversion from a gas to a liquid. We're going to absorb that into the heat exchanger before it passes out of the boiler. Again, at Patterson Kelly, we've thought about this in the design of our boilers, is that we bring the combustion air into the cabinet of the boiler. 
This helps to cool off the heat exchanger, preheat the air, does wonderful things for combustion, but it also allows us to have a very low differential between return water temperature and exhaust temperature. So many times uh, we never exceed about a 10 degree differential. What does that mean? That means that if we come back at 120 degrees on the return water, which is a reality in today's systems, our exhaust temperature is only going to be 130, so we'll still be just on the brink of, of condensing. We'll get a 90 or, or 90 plus efficiency out of the boiler. Um, one, of the, one of the other things that I've noticed out in the field, because I look at actual combustion reports uh, and do combustion tests while I'm out in the field, is that many times because of the fact that we don't connect the air to the burner, uh, we can run temperatures on the exhaust that are just about the same as the return water temperature. So now we really can condense a lot more than we would normally do. So now if, if we're coming back at 120, our exhaust may only be 120, 121. And as you drop below that 130, the more you drop, the more condensation occurs and the more energy we capture before uh, it exits the boiler. If you look at this chart here, we're looking at the uh, Mach series, our aluminum boilers. And as you can see, as I said earlier, um, a reduced firing rate, yes, that can produce a lot more efficiency. But if you look at the water temperature, the water temperature, the lower the temperature is, the better the efficiency is. So the spread between, let's say, 110 and 130 is pretty dramatic. But more so when the temperature is low. So you can see that the, the graph on 110 goes up really steep. And that's because of that cooler water. And of course, when you get up into the 80 and 90 degree range, you see very little difference because at 80 degrees, you're going to condense even at high fire. So if you look to the left of the graph, even at a 100% firing rate, which is what the one stands for, uh, we're running at about 91.5% uh, efficiency. So even though we're at 100% firing rate, which gives us the most condensation, because remember condensation is a product of how much input and how much you can condense from that input. So typically a 1 million BTU boiler will, will condense 10 gallons of water in an hour, but that's at a very low temperature. Even at high fire, it will, it will condense uh, a, a larger quantity than what you would do if you went down to low fire but had 130 degrees. So I promised I would uh, talk about the dirty little secret of turndown, uh, this buzzword in the industry. And really turndown, uh, for the most part, is used to accommodate uh, potential deficiencies either in the sizing of the equipment or the design of the system. And uh, if we can reduce the input, uh, we, can, we can certainly accommodate those things. So when we, when we get into turndown, uh, just remember a couple of key points. Uh, we don't want to use excess air because we don't want to lower the dew point and uh, we want to come up with a, a process where we can get the same dew point as we would get with 5 to 1 even if we go to 10 to 1. So you'll notice that with our final slide is a question slide and that's because that's really important for us that uh, you give us feedback uh, as to the uh, quality of the video, uh, also the content that's in there um, and also some, some suggestions if you have any about uh, future videos and, and, and topics that we can cover. Um, we look forward to bringing you uh, as much information as possible to make uh, your life much easier. So thank you for your time and we'll see you again soon.